Hello friends, this is Shravan. This is my YouTube channel, Civil Engineering by Shravan. To subscribe my channel, click on subscribe button and click on bell icon for more interesting updates. In this video, I will explain you question and answer episode number 2 which are taken from comment box. So, my first question is uh, why you are not designing plinth beams in your tutorial? So, basically plinth beams are the secondary beams. Uh, no need to consider designing part for the plinth beams. So, that's why I am not considering uh, plinth beam design models in my uh, video tutorial. So, if possible, I will make a video how to consider uh, plinth beams and designing part for the P plus 1 building with plinth beams by using StatPro V8 software. So, in that video, I will show you how to uh, design the plinth beams for the respected G plus 1 building as per 456-2000 code. So, this is my answer for the first question. So, second question is what is ETAPS and difference between the ETAPS and StatPro software? Basically, ETAPS software is extended three-dimensional analysis of building software. So, this software is also do the analysis part and designing part for the respected structure. It is having same properties like as a StatPro software, but the modeling process is different as compared to your StatPro software. In ETAPS software, it will give you the AST percentage as well as AST requirement for the respected uh, beam sections as well as column sections. So, the major difference between the ETAPS software and StatPro software is the top modeling part as per my knowledge. So, both give the accurate values for the respected area of steel requirement and area of steel uh, provided for the respected beam members and column members. So, this is the second answer for my respected second question. Third one is why you are not showing slab results in StatPro software. So, this is the frequently asked question in my channel. Most of the people are asking this type of question. While you are modeling any kind of the building, we are assigning the slab section with the help of the plates and we are applying the thickness of the respected plate. So, after applying the thickness, we are applying the load cases. So, after that, we need to design the slab. While designing the slab, we are taking a uh, design of plate element. When you apply the plates as a design element, so it will give you the value of maximum moment in x direction condition as well as maximum moment in z direction condition. So, with the help of those maximum moment values, we can easily calculate the reinforcement values for the respective slab section. So, it is impossible to design slab section as per IS 456-2000 code, but it is possible to design slab design reinforcement values as per BS 8007 code. I was already did a video how to design the slab by using BS 8007 code. So, please follow that video. So, I will provide you that video in above cart link and below description of this respected video. So, this is my explanation for the respected third question. My next question is please explain us how to design building manually. The building design with the help of manual method is long process. So, it is impossible to design the manual method in single video. So, that is why I am not making a videos on a manual design method. But definitely in my upcoming videos, I will explain you how to design uh, G plus 1 building or G plus 2 building with the help of manual method as per IS 456-2000 code as soon as possible. So, this is my answer for this respected question. My fifth question is what is earthquake resistance structure? So, in this question itself indicates earthquake resistance structure, nothing but overcoming your earthquake load, designing of your structure, overcoming your earthquake load. We have different techniques are that for overcoming your earthquake loading condition. So, first method is applying the bracing, steel bracings for the respective structure to decrease the seismic load condition. So, second method is to provide the shear wall condition to decrease the seismic loading condition. Third one is base isolation system. This is also one of the most important technique to overcome your earthquake loading condition. Along with this respected techniques, we have another two methods also there. First technique is rubber isolator at the fixed supports. We need to provide the rubber isolator system in order to overcome this respected displaction values as per the seismic loading point of view. So, other technique is friction pendulum system. This is also one of the most important techniques. So, these are the uh, two other techniques which are overcoming your earthquake load. So, this is my explanation for earthquake resistance structure design, different types of techniques. So, my next question is how to take load combinations according to my area. So, this is my sixth question. So, most of the people are asking this type of uh, question. Uh, I will explain this uh, question with the example. For example, let us consider we need to construct a building of G plus uh, 1 building in a uh, seismic zone condition 5 which is located in Delhi condition. So, in Delhi condition, we have seismic zone of 5. So, that is why we need to consider seismic load 1 condition. So, second one is we need to consider the structural loads as well as a moving load point of view and 
non movable load point of view so that's why we need to consider the dead load case so this is the secondary load cases so after that we need to consider the moving load or non movable load that will be comes under your live load condition so we need to consider the live load also before going to the designing of any kind of the building in delhi condition so along with this load cases we need to conclude whether we need to add wind load or not so as per is code height of the building is greater than your uh, 10 meter we need to consider your respected wind loading condition otherwise it will not mandatory to take the wind loading condition so that's why i am not considering your wind loading condition for the respected g plus 1 building why because my g plus 1 building height is 6 meter height so it is less than your 10 meter height so that's why i'm not considering a wind loading condition so for this respected building of delhi condition we need to consider dead load condition is the first load case live load condition is the second load case and seismic load is the third load case so we need to design this respected uh, structure of g plus 1 building as per this three load point of view so along with that load cases we need to add the load combinations also so if you need how to add the load combinations as per is 456 i will attach the video in above cart link and below description of this respect video please follow that video so this is my answer for how to add the different types of loads and combinations as per the designing point of view for the respected g plus 1 building so this is my answer for the respected question my seventh question is why my shear force diagram and bending moment diagram now zooming like your model so this is a frequently asked question in my channel after an analysis process completed we need to check the shear force diagram as well as the bending moment diagram so for that initially we need to press on control button with the help of center key of your mouse we need to scroll that respected key in upward direction or downward direction so with the help of control button and scroll button in your mouse so this is my answer eighth question is please do some tutorials on SAP software so basically SAP is also a structure analysis program it is also designing your respected building as per your requirement so I am not doing any videos on uh, SAP 2000 software nowadays so in my upcoming videos I will explain you how to design a building by using SAP 2000 software definitely so this is also a one of the part in my schedule so I will update uh, videos of SAP as soon as possible like Stat Pro series initially I need to complete my E-Type series like Stat Pro tutorials so after completing completing e types tutorial i will update sap tutorials also in our channel so this is my answer for eighth question ninth question is what are different types of bracings so basically we are applying the bracings for decreasing the seismic loading condition to design earthquake resistance structure generally bracings are six types one is uh, forward bracings and one is backward bracings bracings fourth one is inverted v bracings fifth one is x bracings and the sixth one is K bracings so as per my experience we need to consider X type of bracings for decreasing the bending moment value for the respected seismic loading point of view so you need to consider any one of this respected uh, bracing system as per your convenient as per your location as per your design consideration so this is my ninth last question is please make some videos on stat RCDC so most of the people of our subscribers also asking uh, do some videos on RCDC uh, tutorials so basically RCDC is stat advanced Advanced concrete design so this is also most important software for the structural designing point of view actually I am practicing some tutorials which are helpful for our subscribers and viewers so if I get perfect design for the RCDC uh, I will definitely make the videos for the respected RCDC software also thank you